good people. It is I, the Empress K, and we are here for 600 seconds with the beautiful Reese Raps. Hey, thank what you up, so everybody? much for joining us. Y'all make some noise for. <laughs> so if you will, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I go by Reese Raps. I'm a hip hop artist based in Charlotte, North Carolina, originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I lived in California for a little bit, St. Louis, Kansas City, and then I moved to Charlotte about three years ago. So I have a different sound. I mix like the old school vibes with the new vibes, and I just really um, love making music just for my heart and my soul and, put, and making timeless music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how did you get started? Really, it started not so serious. It started like in college, my freshman year. I would just, well, even before that, I actually wrote my whole life. I did poetry, and, but when it came to rapping, in college, um, I used to freestyle just for fun and stuff, and I was like, if I could freestyle, let me actually try to write some rap down. So then I started a YouTube, and I was just rapping and stuff on there, and then I started taking it seriously when I actually moved to Charlotte. I had got out of a rough situ relationship and stuff from Kansas City, so when I moved to Charlotte, I was like, I'm gonna just do what I wanna do. Yeah. And so I started recording, getting in the studio. I met a dope producer, Crazy Figs, out there in Charlotte, and he really helped me like, learn my sound, and just I've just been doing it ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so your influences and inspirations, tell us a little bit, a little bit about that. I feel like I'm most influenced by my grandfather. He really did a lot. Well, he actually had a um, lip syncing group called The Unspeakables. So as far as performing, I did start doing that again in my adulthood back in 2018. But as a child, I actually was a part of that group. So from when I was like five years old until I was like 12 years old, I was like one of the members of The Unspeakables group. We were lip syncing oldies like Patti LaBelle and different things. So just. He, my granddad has so many records too, just he loved music so much. So that was really where I found my love for music. My um, uncles are DJs, so my mom grew up around music. She loves music, so, and she raps too. So wow, <laughs> that's like, dope. it's just in my, I feel like it's in my DNA. Yeah, definitely. That's so dope. So where does your stage name come from? Again, it came from my granddad, actually. So um, he, gave, he gave everybody their own nickname. So my nickname was Reese, because I'm guessing because my middle name is Sharice. Okay. And when it came to getting a rap name, I always heard you can't name yourself. And I only had like a couple nicknames people called me Reese, Iggy, Bottles. I'm like, Reese is like the best out of those three. And then I made that my Instagram name and people were just calling me Reese Raps and they're asking me, is your name Reese or Reese Raps? And so I started going by Reese Raps just so, you know, for search engine optimization and all that. So, yeah. you know, if you search Reese Raps, I'm going to pop up. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm sure people still just call you Reese sometimes, right? Yeah. <laughs> but they call me Reese Raps. You call me Miss Raps. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's dope. So what is the concept behind your colorful style, your music, and especially your album cover art? My style really changed when I moved because actually I left all my clothes and everything behind. I started all over with all my furniture, everything. So I was just like in a point where I felt really free because I was in a um, toxic relationship. It was very controlling. I wasn't able to be myself. I wasn't able to dress how I wanted to dress. So. When I rebuilt my whole wardrobe, I was like, this is a perfect opportunity to just really do what I want to do. And so that's where the colors come from. I love colors. I have a colorful personality, so that's why I like to dress in colors. But sometimes I want to be in all black. It, yeah. just, it just depends. I always liked to be stylish, so. But um, my album art, it was more with the colors again, but I was really just creative directing my own album art, I just wanted something to pop, you know, and look different, so I went, um, I actually met the photographer in Columbia, I had came out here for a show, and he was just taking pictures, and I, I set up a photo shoot with him, and he was like, we need to get these flowers, and I was like, all right, I want three of me on there, I just wanted to pop, so, but um, the Diary of a Pothead, that concept was born when I first started rapping when I was 19, I had wrote a poem and it was called The Diary of a Pothead. I didn't even realize until people started abbreviating it that it stands for dope. So D-O-A-P, Diary of a Pothead. So, and a lot of people say, you're dope. That's like yeah. how I'm most commonly described. So it worked out. 
Dope. <laughs> Dope, right? <laughs> so how important is family to you? I love my family so much. Like, it's very important. I have a big family. I'm the youngest. I have three sisters, two brothers, and my parents are still together. So they're, and they just really, they're almost too supportive at times, and that's good, but then it also can um, cripple you, but I've always been someone very determined, work on my own, work for myself, and stuff like that. But um, it's just very important. You gotta have a good relationship with your family, or at least try to. I know some situations it's not as easy, but I was blessed to have loving parents that will really do anything for their kids. So that really helped me, because when I was starting out, I was always good at writing, but my delivery was not there all the way. But my mom, my sister, like those were my biggest fans. They always like, they always show me love. And that just really helped me in the beginning, like to know, okay, you, you on to something here. So if I had my family in my ear, like discouraging me from what I want to do, I might not be sitting here. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. I can definitely feel you there. So what does the cobra symbolize to you? So the cobra, like in Egypt, they wore the king cobra on their headdress, you know, symbolizes wisdom. Um, snakes actually have one of the biggest, or pineal glands out of all animals. So they're very intuitive. And I feel like snakes and um, black people got a lot in common. Just when, I used to actually have pet snakes. And when I actually owned snakes, I realized how docile they were and how, um, they paint them like in the Bible, the snake is evil, it's the devil as yeah. a snake. And we see a snake pop up on a screen with some music and make you scared of a snake, just like you look at black people and you might see them on a the screen and not actually interact with black people and you feel like they're scary or, or because of how we're painted in the media. So I feel like snakes are the same way. They don't bother nobody unless they get bothered. You know, they mind their own business just like we be minding our own business. So, and people want to just kill snakes for no reason just for being a snake and being in this habitat just like we get killed for no reason for being in our habitat. So I feel like a lot of us are scared of snakes because we were taught to be scared of snakes. But if you or in Africa, they play with snakes like pets. Like, yeah, so yeah. it's just about perspective, just like with anything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's why I got a tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I got a cover up actually on my back. Okay. That's awesome. So if you will, tell us about Pro Vibe. Pro Vibe is my new single. It dropped on 420. So I was really excited to drop this single just because it, it's different from anything else I've put out and I don't think um, I've been able to show how my sound has changed over the last year during COVID. I really discovered where I wanted to go with my sound. So Pro Vibe is because I provide the vibes, therefore I'm Pro Vibe. I am for the vibes, you could be Pro Vibe too. So it's just a vibey song, something you can chill out to, something you can play over and over again. It's very, I kept it very simple and I feel like it could reach a lot of different types of people, no matter what your age is. I don't cuss in the whole song. It's very simple. Babies like it, dogs like it. It's weird. People are sending me videos of their dogs <laughs> freaking out to the song. And, and babies are reacting to it. It's, yeah. it's really cool. That's cool. That's cool. So what's the best work you've done so far? I always like the latest work I've done. So it's like the newest song I create. Anything like that, I always feel like it's my best most of the time. So it's hard to say, I, I, it always changes. Everything has been my favorite at one point or another, every song, everything, but best work as in like music or just anything. Anything. It would be my music though, <laughs> for sure. But um, also I like to curate events. I like to create things. I like to um, provide opportunities for artists that are dope and different stuff like that. So just provide more platforms because we don't have a lot of that where I'm at, so. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. So tell us about some upcoming events and projects that you have. So I'll be dropping another single next month. It's called Elevator. And it's like totally, it's a vibe, but it's like a totally different vibe from Pro Vibe. So it's very like rapper heavy, like it's more focus on rapping like pro vibe is more melodic so i just wanted to show my versatility it was produced by slim hood in charlotte north carolina he's one of the dopest producers in charlotte it's a it's really different for him too so it's something different for the both of us i'm really excited to drop that one um i'll be dropping my song alibi i'll be performing that later so it's uh it's a different vibe it's like another different vibe new music and 
I'm planning on dropping a project soon too. Okay. And I also do a monthly event in Charlotte. It's called Bam Charlotte. It's the first Saturday of every month and it's like a hip hop concert and we have four artists perform and two producers and I host it, we curate it, we promote it and it's at a pretty dope venue in Charlotte, Crown Station. And just be on the lookout, we throw jam sessions, we do all types of stuff. Dope, I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. So tell us about some of your tattoos. So I have three tattoos. One was the cobra. Yeah. And it covered up, I had some random hearts on me when I was like a teenager. And I, I didn't get it covered up for so long because I wanted to make sure I was intentional about what I get from now on because tattoos are forever for the most yeah. part. Like, so I got that. I also got, my last tattoo I got was one on my wrist. It says 4-12. I'm from Pittsburgh, the area code is 412. But my birthday is also April 12th, so it's the same. <laughs> So I felt like that was for a reason, so I got that tatted. I got the parentheses to symbolize the area code and then the dash for my birthday. And then I have a quote, and it says, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. I love that. Love that. Right? <laughs> Thank you. So what's your favorite childhood memory? Yeah, it's weird. Like, my favorite childhood memory was, it was when, because first I grew up in the suburbs, and then, like, my dad, we lost everything. When my dad lost his job, we lost our house and stuff. And I was, like, maybe in fourth grade. And I know, and we were going downtown in Pittsburgh with my mom, and for some reason, we had so much fun. She was taking care of business, but it was like the regatta was going on downtown, and we were going, everything was free, but we just had a lot of fun. It was just me, my mom, my sister, my brother. Cause we, there's like a 10 year gap between me and my older siblings. So the younger three kind of grew up more together. We were like the kids and we just had a lot of fun. And even though we were going through a lot at that time, she didn't really show it. And it was just a fun time. We didn't really understand what was happening until actually after it happened. But it's a weird, it's like nothing significant about it, but it's so significant at the same time. But that's like what first comes to mind when people ask that. What's one place you would most like to visit? If you could go anywhere in the world, where would that be? Somewhere in Africa, but I'm thinking like, I wanna go to Egypt. I wanna go to Egypt, it's like really beautiful out there. But I wanna go on a whole tour, there's so many beautiful spots in Africa, like I definitely wanna go there. I'm gonna go there, but what scares me is the shots and everything, not knowing where you're gonna go, but they do stuff to try to scare you away from it, but I'm gonna definitely go one day. <laughs> so, do you watch television? I do not really watch TV at all, or Netflix or anything, or movies. Like, I haven't watched TV in like, like consistently or a show or anything since, since I moved to North Carolina. So it's been like over three years, but even when I was with my ex, he always watched TV and that was the thing, like I didn't, before I was with him, I wasn't really watching TV like that. I would just keep it off, but it was kind of like, I feel like we don't realize what happens when we're just watching TV, depending on what we're watching, what, all the things that go on in our subconscious mind and things you don't even understand you're watching, especially if you're going to sleep to the TV and different things. Like, I feel like it could be like an addiction in a way, but we all got our own addictions and vices, because I do be in my phone now where I didn't used to be in my phone. <laughs> but I just feel like, you can watch TV, it just depends on how you watch it, but I just, I don't have no interest. I love music, like I'd rather sit around and listen to music or freestyle something or write something than to watch TV. But that can motivate you to write stuff. So it's like, sometimes I'm drawing for more material and I'm like, I don't have the pop culture aspect to add to it. So maybe I'll start watching TV. <laughs> Hey, I understand, I understand. So if you could put together a two song playlist, one song for the day, one song for the night, what would those two songs be? Not my own songs? <laughs> no, I would probably okay. do one for the day and one for the night. I would probably do, I would probably do Blank by Elevator J for the day. 
Elevator J is an artist out of Charlotte. He's really dope. But the song Blank, like that's like one of my top 10 favorite songs. Or I would do The Whole World by Outkast. I feel like those songs go hand in hand for me. Like that's okay. how dope Blake is to me. Like it makes me so happy. I like happy beats. I like, that's like a good daytime summer song. Yeah. And at night, I would play Pro Vibe. That's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> like okay. Pro Vibe is a good like wind down. That's a good daytime song too though. Can I play Pro Vibe for the day and the night now? <laughs> Why not? Right. <laughs> Why not? Like, like I one feel of like the artists said it. earlier, if you don't go hard for your own music, who else gonna go hard for it? So why yeah, not? Yeah, for real. I be listening to my own stuff most of the time, but Pro Vibe has been like on repeat. And then when it came out, like I kind of lost interest in it for a, a little bit because I had heard it like a thousand that times. Awesome. <laughs> and then it came out and I was like, I want to hear it again now, so I'll just be playing it. But I like a lot of different music. I like funky music. I like instrumentation. I like, I like different stuff outside the box. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you could work with one creative artist, who would that be? Kanye West. He's so dope. Kanye is really like one of the greatest most talented people of all time. Like the way he makes, like his production yeah. is out of this world. Like I feel like his creativity is just like unmatched. Just the stuff he puts together and the arrangements and all the different vibes. I just feel like we could come up with something really dope. But I want to work with Kanye West. I, he was one of my first favorite rappers when I was like in elementary school. Like so it was. I've kind of grew with him. Like, I feel like he's like a brother to me. Aww. Like, as far as music, like, definitely be on the lookout for that Kanye collab. All right. <laughs> I'm speaking it. You heard it here first. Okay. <laughs> Speak that. Speak it. So what would be your I've made it moment? What do you think that would be? I'm still waiting on it. I feel like you have a lot of little milestones, but... I don't think I'm ever gonna have a moment where I'm like, okay, I made it. Cause I'm always someone who is unsatisfied. I'm always gonna be hungry for more. I'm always gonna look at the next level. I'm always gonna compare in the next bracket. You know, there's always gonna be something. So that's kind of like a blessing and a curse at the same time. Cause you gotta be able to be content in where you are at the same time. But I don't feel like I made it. I've done a lot, but I don't feel like I made it. You know, I'm still on the come up. <laughs> So do you have any advice for others? If you could just give one piece of advice, what would that be? Just do you. Don't worry about what everybody else doing. I gotta remind myself, just do you. You are you. You're the only you. You're the best at doing you. So there's nobody else that can be you. So why be anybody else? Why try to be anybody else? Why be duplicated? You know what I'm saying? Why try to copycat someone else or your sound, your style? I really, when I start just being me and just not worrying about whether people would like this song or not, I realized like I'm really coming up with some original, timeless stuff. And you gotta be, you gotta go against the grain, you gotta be the trendsetter. So just do you, cause you're the only one that could do you. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> so why should people follow and support you? I feel like I put a lot of work in. And um, I got a lot more to go. I feel like I only scratched the surface right now. So follow me now, hear about me later. You, go, you might see me later down the line and be like, oh, that was the same girl from earlier. I just feel like this is only the beginning, even though people might see it a certain way or whatever. I, but I feel like you should follow because I got some dope music coming on the way. I got some really dope sounds. I just feel like anybody can like it, no matter what your age is or anything. It's, it's, it's really kind of nostalgic, but it's something new and fresh like you never heard before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can follow me at Reese Raps, R-E-E-C-E-E-R-A-P-S -E 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 on everything. You can stream my music, the Diary of Apache EP or the Dope EP on all major platforms. Look me up on Instagram, Facebook, Reese, um, YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
check out my new single. I got other songs that I dropped this year, earlier this year. I got Love, Dream, a lot of different songs on a lot of different topics. I'm talking about domestic violence, all different types of stuff, black plights, all, everything, you know? So I just talk about life, and that's why my project was called The Diary of a Piehead, because it's like a diary more than it is about weed songs. It's only mentioned weed on one, on one record. Gotcha, so. gotcha. But yeah, just follow with it. Let me know what you think and everything. I'll, I'll message back. Appreciate y'all so much. Do you have any final shout outs? Shout out to Charnel, Charnel over there in the back. I appreciate you coming out here. She came with me today. She is really literally the most talented person I've ever met in the flesh. Like, she's just super dope, super dope singer, artist. We got a couple songs together on the project, Happy Right Now and Free. And, um, our producer introduced us and connected us, and it was just uh, so organic. She showed love from the beginning in Charlotte, and she's just so talented, can sing anything effortlessly, can rap, write, stage direct, she does everything. So, such a creative, you know, and I love to be around other creatives like that, so I appreciate her energy here. Also, shout out to my family, my parents, shout out to everyone who's supported since day one, everyone who's just now figuring out, supporting anyone who's followed, liked anything, listened to a song, shared a song. We appreciate it as artists, like we need that. Like we all want to come up, like support. Appreciate anyone that's ever came to any event I've had or anything, like showed any love. So told anybody about me, that's like word of mouth is like the biggest thing. But yeah, shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody here tonight. Shout out to Columbia, shout out to you. Shout out to Hilo Art, shout out to the house restaurant. Yeah. And that's it, shout out to the most high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm done with my shout outs. <laughs> That's love. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Reese Raps. Y'all make you. some noise for Reese Raps tonight. Thank you. Never.
LEBIH HATI HATI